cell salts, just to make this really brief, uh, back in the mid -19, late 19th century, there was a medical doctor slash homeopath named Schussler, a German doctor homeopath, who became very tired of allopathic medicine. Uh, he had a real issue with the toxic chemicals and drugs that were used and the terrible side effects he's had on people. So he quit being a doctor. But then he came upon an idea, being a homeopath. He took a cadaver or cadavers, and he cremated various parts of those cadavers, the heart, the brain, the kidneys, in isolation. And he analyzed their ash to see what minerals were in there, mineral salts, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, potassium sulfate, and so forth. And he found that each organ had its own component salts, dominated by certain salts. And that the entire body, 12 of these salts were found in many places and did many things. And he created a system of taking these salts based upon what areas they were specific for, homeopathically diluting them, one to 1,000 parts, one to a million, and so forth, in the homeopathic way, and administering them to people who are ill. Certain salts for the heart, certain for the nerves, for the kidneys, and so forth. And he had great results. And it became the system called the biochemic system of medicine, cell salt medicine. It's still around today. I've been using it my entire practice since the early, well, actually, the late 70s. I've used it with babies as young as a day old. And an, an old guy who was 106, that's the range that I've used cell salts with. I've used them in hospitals with individuals and got them out of the hospital the same day. If you get them right, cell salts, and here's the beauty part of cell salts. One, they're inexpensive. Two, they're readily available. Three, they're utterly non-toxic. There are no toxic, there's no toxicity. There's no terrible side effects. They're the safest among all medicines that I've used in my naturopathic work. So here's what I did. I have found that each of the cell salts corresponds with a specific essential oil. And here's a list. Calcium fluoride, balsam fir, and spikenard. Calcium phosphate, silver fir, calcium sulfate, savory, iron phosphate, ferrum phos, Douglas fir, magnesium phosphate, coriander, and so forth. 12 cell salts, 12 oils. Each of these cell salts belongs to a mineral family, the calcium family, the iron family, the magnesium family, potassium sodium, and silica, which is silicic acid or silicon dioxide. So what we do to make a blend, let's say, for instance, this individual that you are going to prescribe for, and that individual may be you, based upon what you learn about these cell salts, needs calcium phosphate, and I'm making this simple, iron phosphate and magnesium phosphate which gives us silver fir, Douglas fir, and coriander oils. That's part of the blend. Those are called the givens. Those oils will be in the blend that that person will use with these three cell salts. But we're going to make the blend deeper acting, more dynamic. How do we do that? Well, first, we recognize, well, which families are they in? Well, one is in the calcium family, one's in the iron family, one's in the magnesium family. Each of these families has certain themes associated with them and other oils that are in those families. For instance, in the calcium family, we have all these oils. All these oils. So we get this from the spiritual phytoessential repertory of essential oils. We have the rubric calcium themes. So some of these oils will be candidates for calcium. We'll get the magnesium themes rubric and the iron themes rubric when we're dealing with those particular salts. Each of the cell salts is associated with specific chakras. And based upon what you're trying to treat in that case, you'll know which chakra it is. For instance, stomach symptoms, 
chakra three. Kidney symptoms, chakra two. So we grab the chakra rubric. Look at all the oils in here that now become potential candidates. Each of the cell salts is associated with a sun sign. Pisces is associated with ferrum fos. So we grab one of these, where we grab those rubrics for the three cell salts, we grab the three sun sign rubrics. And of course, you're treating some symptom or physiological site. So let's say you're treating anxiety or you're treating asthma. You grab those rubrics. And these are aligned in that same way as I showed you before, the rubric overlays, where you're, you're doing this filtration process of finding oils that occur in all these rubrics that you are lining up vertically. Once you now have your standouts list of oils, and then there's, of course, modalities. In other words, what is the symptom better for or worse for? So if it's worse for cold, you have that rubric, worse for cold. And then once you have all of that, you then, and I'm really abbreviating here, you then can determine which other oils will go into the blend with your three given oils, those three oils associated with the three cell salts that you chose to make this dynamic full body blend. What do you do with that blend? You use it with the cell salts. How? The cell salts are used internally. The blend is used externally. It's applied to chakras. It's applied to acupoints. It's applied to skin reflex points according to what you're treating. Because the cell salts are homeopathically diluted one to one million, we are diluting the blend that we're making one to 1,000. One to 1,000 dilution on the blend. So a little bit goes a really long way. And it's the that diluted blend which is applied to the chakras, to the reflex points, and to acupoints. Not only that, in certain cases, in most cases of people you'll be dealing with who are spiritually sensitive, they're going to be tending towards deficiency and coldness. And in those cases, you can use moxibustion, moxa, which is burning a mugwort. You can use a moxa stick, which is called indirect moxibustion, or direct moxibustion, which means rolling the mugwort herb into little cones and, and actually sticking them to acupoints. You do that using a little bit of lip balm. You rub some natural lip balm on the point, and you, the little cone will stick to it. Then you light it with an incense stick. And you do that, you would take the cell salts first, then burn the moxa, then wait a little while, and rub the blend into those moxa points. You're only doing moxa a couple of times a week, but you're using the cell salts and the oils perhaps even every day, even more than once a day. And it's this entire system that I'm teaching system of the cell salts, creating the blends, selecting the points, administering the salts, using the blend on the points, and so forth. That gives you an entire therapeutic system that works both the inner and the outer.